And when you hear that, it, it's, it's in you, you know, you get, you get a crazy feeling. It's like, time to go, time to go. It blows, and it's, it's kind of heading out, you know. So we're, we're at the edge of the ice, and it's, it's almost shaped like this, you know, straight. It keeps blowing. And I lift up my hand, and I wave to the guys. But you can't say anything to you guys. Quiet, quiet. And they wave, and they see me. And they all get alongside the boat, and they push me out after the whale. So I'm in this 16-foot homemade boat. It's made out of wood, and we have the ladies so bearded seal skins onto it, you know, you're in a little boat and you're going after a whale, you don't even know how big it is. And you're skimming across the water and you can hear the water hitting the boat. And I'm coming up on the whale and I'm maybe 20 feet. And I lift up the harpoon and then I feel a jerk. I look back and the rope that they pull, they pull the boat back in, you know, I got no oarsmen in the boat. It's just me, they pull the rope back in and we had ran out of rope. So then, in front of me, I see one of my biggest dreams diving, going down. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it kind of robs that adrenaline from me, you know? I like feeling good, adrenaline is good, I like it. And I see it diving, you know, I kind of get bummed a little bit. They pull me back in, they pull the boat back up on the launch, and we get back in there and we get ready. <laughs> and then, I'm sitting there again. Same beautiful, amazing scene. Even if you turn around, it's still beautiful because it's all white. You know, it's beautiful. And I'm sitting there again, getting ready. You know, I just, I just got a little taste of what it's like. And this is my first time in front of the boat. This is my first time doing all of this. I've only seen a whale harpoon three times maybe before, and I was only in the boat a couple of times. So this is, this is like, this is new to me. I like this feeling. So then, I'm sitting back up there. I look back and they're fixing the antenna because you know, if you catch a whale, you gotta let people know. So they're back on that and then maybe an hour later, this whale right in front of the boat and you're, you're sitting there, it's silent, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And what you hear is that sound that you've been wanting to hear again. And it lets out this jet of, of water and of mist, and it's just there. And I lift up my hand again, and I, I, I point, you know? And they all get alongside the boat. And I say, let's build up, let's build up. And I mean, let's go over, let's go over, so we don't have any restrictions to how far we can go. So then we all get in the boat, and we start oaring. And what it is, is you follow the person that's in front of you. And the person in front of you follows the person that's in front of them, and eventually you get to the front of the boat, and that's where I am. And I was, I was, I was told that, you know, the, the front guy sets the pace. You know, we got a couple of guys that are smokers, and, you know, they <laughs> smoke, so I'm not worried about them, you know, I'm setting the pace. I'm going as fast as I could, you know, there's a whale right there. So I'm going hard, you know, and it's an amazing feeling. You don't even have to see it. You feel it that... When your, your, your oar hits the water and you, you thrust forward, it's not only you, you know, you got this group of guys supporting you. And we're going through the water. I mean, we're, we're burning through the water. We're going. And that whale's coming up, surfacing. It's getting its air. And then stuff starts happening. I don't even know what it is. I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm not even thinking anymore. I'm just... Stuff's just happening. I'm doing stuff that I didn't even, you know, I didn't plan it. I didn't, I've, I've been waiting for it all my life, you know. And um, we're going, we're doing it. We're, this is happening. So we're oaring. And we get maybe 20 feet from it. And I pick up my oar out of the water. The guys behind me set the pace now. I stick my oar inside of the boat. I take my gloves off because my uncles, my ancestors, this is what they told me. They said, take your gloves off. You'll have the most grip with your hands. And my uncle even made a joke, use your nails if you have to, you know, you hold that harpoon. And so I grab it, and we're going, we're going through the water, and we're coming up on the well, and I remember looking on the back of the blowhole. It's shaped like, you know, like your nose, like this, and, and I remember looking at that, and I wasn't thinking, you know, I, I, 
this was just all happening. This was just, I, I didn't have to think about anything. It was just starting to do what it's supposed to do, my body, that is. And we go up to the well, and I lift up my harpoon, and we're 15 feet away. And I throw it my hardest. I throw it my hardest, the hardest I've ever thrown. And I watch as the harpoon pierces the black, the muktuk is what we call it, the skin of the whale, it pierces it. And I watch the trigger rod, this is all happening in slow motion, it's crazy. It's crazy that that trigger rod hits it, the bomb shoots in, you know that smell of burnt black powder, not like any rifles today, it's the real black powder and it smells kind of funky. Smell that, and then the bomb blows up on the inside, and you can see the ripple of water a little bit, and that, that just happened. And what I was always taught from seeing videos from people talking to me, you know, I talk to my uncles and ask them, what, what do I do, what do I do when this happens, what do I do when that happens? And they said, never touch the rope up front, because we have a rope coil, maybe 50 feet, and then it goes back to the float, which is 250 feet. So, this whale was right here, and I just harpooned it, and I was waiting for that rope to start going out, you know? I said, hurry up, this stuff is all supposed to happen, start going. So I started throwing the rope out of the boat, like, you're supposed to already be out of here, man. <laughs> and we, 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 this is the whale, this is the ice edge, and we went, we went maybe 100 feet, and we were right here when I was doing all that. And we came around this side, and I was looking at the whale in the water, and it's, it's a whale, you know? This is a whale, you can see the white of its jaws, you can see its tail, you can, you can see this whale. So, it, it starts dawning on me, you know, this feeling, it's like undescribable, it's something that I've been like, I've been, I've been dreaming about this, I've been hearing about this, I've been, I've been waiting for this moment, and it's, it's in me, and it's, it's an awesome feeling, and from that point on, when we got onto the ice, I knew that I wanted to feel that feeling for the rest of my life, again and again. So, we go up to the whale, we grab the float, and we start pulling it. And we're taking the float off, the rope off the float. That's all supposed to happen with the whale, but that whale died first bomb. My dad caught his whale when he was younger. His first bomb killed it. My brother caught a whale a couple of years back. His first bomb killed it. I just harpooned my first whale, and the first bomb killed it. And it can't describe the feeling, you know, it's awesome. So we start pulling in the whale, and there's just three of us guys, we're pulling on a rope, and we're pulling in an animal that's about 30 feet. And they say it's for every two feet of the main body mass, it's a ton. And we're just pulling that through the water like nothing. And it's just, it's, we start screaming and hollering, we're all celebrating. And that was my auntie's birthday also, so we told her, Punch it up, crew caught a whale. She gets on, thank you. And she's happy, everyone's happy, the whole town's happy. And we're pulling in this whale and we're getting it to the edge of the ice. And, okay, I gotta do stuff now. We just caught a big whale, we gotta cut this up. So we tow it to the main spot and we pull it up and we start cutting it up. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. We're, we're working together as a community, the whole community. You can't catch a whale with just one person. You gotta work together. That's one of our values as in Inupiaq is cooperation. And that's a value that I think is really important. Cooperation. So that feeling, that feeling of catching a whale, providing for your people. And food up there isn't much of a problem, you know, people eat. But that soul food, the, the, the animals that we subsist off, that our ancestors subs subsisted off of, that soul food, that's what I'm, I and my crew and my cousins, my, you know, all the guys that I work with, that's what we're able to bring to the people. And I feel that and it's just, it's, it's, not, you can't describe it, it's awesome. And from that time, that April 28th, at 2.35 when we struck that whale, that feeling, I, I've known that from that point on, I always want to feel that feeling.
that feeling of being able to help people, being able to feed people, being able to bring something that not everybody can bring to a person, that happiness. And I've known that I want to I continue that for the rest of my life, and I want to continue on with our cultural hunting and heritage, and I want to thank you guys for listening to my story, and I ask that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.